Hey guys, let's talk about inheritance. Inheritance is when a class can receive attributes and methods from another class. The receiving class is known as a child class. The class that's being inherited from is known as the parent class. It's kind of like how children will inherit their parents' genes and some of their physical traits. It's kind of the same concept. A benefit of inheritance is that it helps to reuse similar code found within multiple classes. Here's an example. We will create an animal class. The animal class will be the parent class. Class animal. I'll make these members publicly accessible. All animals will have a Boolean attribute that we will name alive. If you're an animal, you're alive. Then let's add a method. Maybe an eat method. All animals should be able to eat. Void eat. We'll just print a generic message. Standard output. This animal is eating. I'm going to create two classes, a dog class and a cat class. They will inherit from the animal class. Let's begin with dog. Class dog. To inherit from another class, you would add a colon, then public, the name of the parent class. Dog will inherit from the animal class. That is set of curly braces, semicolon at the end, and we now have a dog class. Now check this out. If I create a dog object, it will have a Boolean variable named alive as well as an eat method. So let's create a dog object. Dog, dog. So I'm going to display that Boolean variable. Dog dot alive. If I display this attribute, this will give me one, which means true. This dog object also has an eat method. Dog dot eat, add a set of parentheses to invoke it. This animal is eating. So even though there's nothing within this dog class, it's inheriting everything from within the animal class. And we could add some additional attributes and methods as well. Maybe just a method this time. I would like to give my dog the ability to speak. So let's make this public. Void. Maybe bark. Standard output. The dog goes woof. My dog is alive and it can eat. My dog can also bark as well. It has its own attributes and methods too. I would like my dog to bark. Okay, my dog is alive, that's set to one. The animal is eating, the dog goes woof. So now let's create a cat class. Class cat. The cat class will inherit from the animal class. I'll make its members publicly accessible. I will give cats a meow function. Void meow. Standard output. The cat goes meow. There. Okay, now we can create a cat object. Cat, cat. Let's print the alive Boolean variable of my cat. Cat.eat. Now I'm going to try and use the bark method of a cat, which we don't have. Let's attempt to use that. So class cat has no member named bark. That's because that method is found within the dog class and not the cat class. Cats have a meow method. I'm instead going to use the meow method. Are cats alive? The animal is eating. The cat goes meow. So that's kind of how inheritance works. A class can inherit attributes and methods from another class. It helps with code reusability. You know technically you could add these attributes and methods to each of these classes, for example. I'll just add the Boolean variable alive to each of these classes, as well as the eat method. You know, this would work too, but we're repeating ourselves. And with programming, we try not to repeat ourselves if we don't have to. Especially because if we have to make a change to the eat method, let's change eat to nom nom nom. Well, I would have to go to each class and make that change manually. And that can be inconvenient if I have hundreds of different classes. 
It would be a lot easier if I just had to make that change in one place. So I'm going to revert all those changes. If I need to make a change to one of these methods, I'm going to change eat to display nom nom nom. Well, then I just have to make that change in one place instead of for every individual class. Let's try another example. We'll create a class named shape. This will be the parent class. We'll make the members publicly accessible. Any class that inherits from the shape class will have a double attribute that we will name area for surface area, double volume. In this example, we won't have any methods this time, just some attributes. I'm going to create class cube. Cube is the child class. It will inherit from the parent class shape. So colon, public, the name of the parent, shape. Even though there's nothing within my cube class, my cube class has an area and volume attribute. Then let's make a sphere class. Class sphere. There we go. I'm going to add a public access modifier. All cubes will have a double side property. Then with spheres, they will have double radius. Then I'm going to add a constructor for both cubes and spheres. Let's begin with cube. Cube, then sphere. In order to instantiate a cube object, I need to pass in a side as an argument when I construct an object. Double side. Then for the sphere, we need a radius. Double radius. I think what we'll do is that when we construct a cube object and a sphere object, we'll calculate the area and the volume based on either the side that we pass in for a cube or the radius for a sphere. Let's begin with the cube. First, let's assign the length of a side. Remember, with a cube, the length, the width, and the height are all the same. This arrow side equals side. To calculate the area, we can use this formula. So this area equals side times side times six, because there are six sides to a cube. Then if you need the volume, you could say this arrow volume equals side to the power of three. We could just say side times side times side, just to keep it simple. Now with the sphere, it's a little more complex. First, let's assign the radius. This arrow radius equals radius. Let's calculate the area of a sphere. This arrow area equals, to calculate the area of a sphere, that would be 4 times pi, let's just say 3.14159, times radius squared. So radius times radius. Then let's calculate the volume. This arrow volume equals, to calculate the volume of a sphere, the formula is four divided by three times pi times radius cubed. So that would be four divided by 3.0. Make sure to divide by 3.0 and not three, because in this case we would be using integer division. We would like to keep that decimal, so 3.0 times pi, that's 3.14159, times radius cubed. To keep it simple, we can say radius times radius times radius. And there we go. Okay, so let's create a cube object to begin with. Cube, I'll name this object just cube. Then in order to construct a cube object, we need to pass in the length of a side. Let's say 10. So my cube class inherits the area and volume attribute from the shape class. Within the constructor of the cube class, we will calculate what the area and the volume is going to be. And I will display that. Standard output area cube dot area. Then I'll add centimeters. Then let's do the same thing with volume. Volume, cube dot volume. If the length of a side is 10, 
The area is going to be 600 centimeters squared. The volume is 1000 centimeters cubed. Now let's try this with our sphere. Sphere, I'll name this object sphere. Then we will pass in the radius. Let's say five. I would like to display the sphere's area and the sphere's volume. The area would be 314 centimeters squared. The volume is 523 centimeters cubed. So yeah, that's inheritance, everybody. A class can inherit attributes and methods from another class. If you have multiple classes and they share similar attributes or methods, you can place them within a parent class and all of those individual classes can inherit from that one common class. It helps with code reusability and you don't have to repeat yourself. If you're looking for some additional practice, post a parent class and a child class in the comments section down below. And well, yeah, that's an introduction to inheritance in C++.